Let's do one more exercise before moving on to new things. We'll create some tabs here, like this. And it'll give us some cool things to talk about. Okay, so if I give this a refresh, I've deleted all of that. We're going to go to Sublime, and as always, we have our root div. We are referencing main.js. And all we've done there is created a new instance. So here's the fun part. We get to define or decide how we want to interact with these tabs. So you may know traditionally, like if you've used jQuery, uh, you might have something like this, where you have a UL with an ID of tabs, and then you have like four list items, and each of those uh, has an anchor tag or something like that. And whoop, you know what? It's a new computer. I may not have the Emmet extension installed. Okay, there we go. So about, about us, about our culture, you get the idea. But then you have to set up another section for like tab panels. And then you have to draw a distinction between this item and then the associated tab panel. And it works, it's just not uh, perfect. Instead, what do we really want? Well, we want some tabs. And then for each one, it would be cool if I could just say, the name of this tab will be about us. And then within here could be the tab content. Here's the content for the About Us tab. I think that would be nice. So maybe we could set up a total of three and then see this in action. How about, about our culture? And then finally, what's something cheesy about our vision? Okay, this is how we want it to work regardless of where we are in our website. I think that's pretty nice. And then to set the active one, yeah, maybe we could have a selected property and I could set that to true. And then we'll use uh, vbind to specify that we do want a Boolean here and not the string, T-R-U-E. Okay, but yeah, if we take a look at this in the browser, that's what we get. Let's get rid of all this. Yeah, that's what we get. So the very first thing I see is because we're doing it in this way, we don't have the headings. So that's why we don't see anything at the top. Well, let's do this. Let's go back to Bulma and see that they do have a tabs component. And we can see this is the general markup, and you get something like this. But again, Bulma doesn't include any of the JavaScript or the behavior, so we're going to have to wire that up ourselves. But do notice that if you apply an isActive class to one of the list items, that will give it the selected styling. All right, so it sounds like we need to dynamically build up this very thing. So let's do that now. In main.js, we'll create our component here. View.component. The first one is tabs. So let's set that up. Now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna set up a template here for us. And then I'm gonna copy this entire fragment and paste it in, like so. But now I gotta figure out these list items dynamically because all we really have at this point is a bunch of child tab components. So take a look at this. Here's one thing we can do. Let's say once this component has mounted, I'm basically ready to go, take a look at this. I can console.log the children and that's gonna give me every child component that you see here. So take a look, back to the browser, refresh, go to the console, and we get an array, but of zero items. There are no children. And that's because, well, right now, we have our tabs component, but we've specified that the template is this. So in effect, these individual tabs here aren't even being interpreted. Those need to be slotted in somewhere. So maybe we could do this. We have the top section for our tabs, and then we're gonna have the bottom section maybe tabs, details, and that's where we will slot in each of those. Okay, so if you remember, that slot tag says, take anything in between the tags and just slot it in right here. Okay, so I'm gonna give that another refresh, but now we get a new warning. Component template should contain exactly one root element, and we've already talked about this once. You wanna make sure that for your component, the template has one master or parent or, or top level parent element. But in our case, we have tabs and tab details. We have two siblings. So I'm gonna wrap this all within another div, like so. And you could give that a class if you need to, but I think we're okay. So I'm gonna give it a refresh now, but next we're on to a new issue, unknown custom element tab. So view has no clue what that is because we haven't defined it. View.component tab. And to start, the template will be, how about just a div? Uh, we really don't know what it will be. Maybe it could be an article tag, but um, this will be fine to get us rolling. Come back and give that a refresh. Okay, so now it does know what a tab component is. 
So when we console.log this dot dollar sign children, sure enough, we get three components and that corresponds to these here. We can even dig in. Here's the L and here's the inner text. Great. So that means we can use this data to dynamically populate the list up here. Maybe something like this. Let's go to tabs and you'll see that I can reference it with VM0. So just to do this in line, vm0.children. And then I could say uh, for each one, console.log the name of the tab. And that's really what I need, what I get undefined here. So what's the problem? I'm passing it through here. However, if we come back, it didn't, it, we didn't accept anything. And remember, you have to be explicit about the props you accept. So we're gonna say props, and to start, you must give us a name. So I'm gonna set required to true. Every tab you create requires a name. And we're gonna use that for the heading as well as the ID. All right, so come back and give that a refresh. And let's track that down again, VM0. And there we go. So now I can filter through all of the children. I can grab the name and that should be everything we need. So let's come back and we'll say, how about this? Once this component is created, let's create a, a tabs item here and we will make that equal to the children. That gives us an easy way to target every tab you've created. However, it is gonna squawk here because we're assigning tabs, but we haven't been explicit about it. So you always wanna be clear of what data your component or instance exposes. We'll default to an empty array here. Okay, so now take a look. Refresh, we go to our tabs instance, and we now have a collection of every tab. So now, think about it. If we scroll up here, we can get rid of all of this junk, and we could just use a simple V4. For tab and tabs, echo out the tabs name. All right, give that a refresh. And there we go. It doesn't look great yet, but we do get about us, about our culture, and about our vision. Now, we're not getting any spacing here because it does expect an anchor tag. So why don't we do this? We don't know where it's going yet, but if we come back and refresh, now we'll have a little more alignment. So now, take a look. If you come back, no matter how many you create here about our other things, it will dynamically populate that bar, which is great. However, if we come back, we still haven't done the thing where we apply a class. So if I were to add an attribute class is active, yeah, you'll see that will now get special styling. So it sounds like we need to set that dynamically, but also set a default. You'll remember up here, we specified that the first item should be selected. So let's do this. We're gonna come back down to our tab and we haven't specified that selected is a prop we accept. So we'll set that explicitly. And this time I'm gonna set a default of false. So if you don't give me anything at all, let's just assume that selected is false. Next, we're gonna do this in two steps. We're gonna do it by referencing that property we just added, and then I'm gonna show you where view will squawk and why we need to change it a little bit. But anyways, right here I could say bind the class to and we'll say, give me a class of is active if the tab is selected. Okay, so if we come back and refresh, yes, about us will be selected by default. However, what about when we change to a new item? It sounds like we need to listen for that. So maybe something like this. When you click on this anchor tag, I'm gonna select a new tab and we're gonna pass through the current tab. So you may not know this, you could do something like this, and it will call a method select tab. But if you ever need to pass through arguments or the, the event object itself, which would be the second argument, you can just call it like a traditional function. So I'm gonna call select tab, but then pass through the current tab that we have here. Now, if we scroll down, I could say methods select tab, and we could alert selecting just to show that it is working. Refresh, click, and we responded to that event. So now, what do we need to do here? It sounds like we need to filter through all of the tabs and say, okay, I want all of them to have their selected status set to false, except for the one the user clicked, right? So maybe we could do this. We'll say, this.tabs go through our collection or our children of tabs. And we'll say, uh, for each tab, we're gonna update its selected property. 
And again, this is something Vue doesn't want you to do. We're just going to do it now to see the error, and then we're going to switch over to something else. But I want you to see this in action first, so that if you run into the problem, you'll know what to do. Anyways, we're going to update this property, and we'll just make it equal to a Boolean of whether the tab's name is equal to the selected tab's name. So if the user clicks on this one, its name is about our culture. So we're going to filter through all the tabs and say, for every single one, I want it to be false. But if the selected one has the same name as the current item in our loop here, then that is the selected tab. So of course that will return true, which means in that particular case, selected will be true. But yeah, view is not gonna like this. I'm gonna bring up Chrome DevTools and go to the console and I'll click on about our culture. And it'll say, avoid mutating a property directly since the value will be overwritten when the parent is re-rendered. Instead, use a data or computed property. So yeah, in general, consider the properties that your component accepts to be immutable. And if you do need mutability, then yeah, you could you could create a computed property or a, uh, a piece of data here. So why don't we do that? Why don't we say data, and we're gonna have a piece of data called is active, which I will set to false. But then once the component is mounted, why don't we set is active equal to that property? Now, if we scroll up, when we filter through all the tabs, we're not gonna mutate the property because that's immutable, it's a one-time thing. We're gonna mutate or change the is active setting. Then once we scroll up, we will bind the is active class to is active on the tab. Okay, so refresh. Data function should return an object. So, uh, whoops, sorry. Okay, anyways, we're gonna click on about our culture and there we go, we changed it. So let's go through that. You clicked on an anchor tag and we called a select tab method. Select tab just filters through all of the children and updates their is active property equal to either false or true if the current tab is equal to the one they clicked. So if we take a look at all of these, notice is active is false, true, false. But if I change it, you'll see that this is now true. Everything's working. Okay, but what about this next section? That's still not updating at all. Regardless of what I select, nothing changes here. Well, why don't we do this? We know that the current tab contains the, the body of the tab, essentially. So if we scroll down, maybe I could just say vshow equals is active. I only want you to display this content if the current tab is selected or active. So now if I refresh, it works. But we do have a couple other things. I wanna make sure when I click on one of these, the, the anchor tag or the ID does reflect what they clicked. So something like about our culture should be it. So let's see, we come back and right now we have no href. Maybe I could link it to the tab and I'm just gonna make something up like tab.href and we'll bind to that. So now if we were to come down to our tab, almost think of this as like a PHP class if it helps. We now want a href or href method. Or, you know what? It doesn't even have to be a method. It's probably better for that to be a computed property. That's what they're for. Ref. And now if I were to say foobar, just to demonstrate this to you, come back, refresh. Now each of those will have a href of foobar. So in our case, what do we want? Well, we want it to link to an ID. So we can use a hash plus, and uh, this is where it's mostly up to you. You could be explicit, so you could have a title but then an ID that you pass through. But in my case, I'm just gonna figure out an ID dynamically based upon this. So think about it. If we come back, assuming that is our name, why don't we get the name, convert it to lowercase. That will give us about our culture. And then I'm just going to replace all the spaces with dashes. So I could do replace and then look for any space globally, meaning more than once replace it with a dash. And that should give us this. So come back, give it a refresh, and I think this should do it for us. Yeah, href is about our culture. So now when I click on these, it should reflect that, and it does. So yeah, that basically does it. Now for your own projects, you might wanna add some, um, some accessibility type things, like uh, I know for tabs, that's especially important. Uh, you'd have to research that, I always have to look it up. But you do things like setting the roles, like role equals tab. There's actually a lot of things to consider there, so we're going to skip over it.